Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's National Geographic Explorer Classroom. My name is Joe Grabowski. I will be your host for today. And we're very excited uh, for today's virtual field trip to South Africa. So we're heading underground to the Rising Star Cave System, and we're gonna meet a group of scientists working on a very exciting project. So in a moment, we're gonna meet Marina Elliott and Becca Pichotto. Marina is a biological anthropologist and National Geographic Explorer, and Becca is an American archeologist. Uh, they're on a three week expedition to the Rising Star Cave System in South Africa, and this system was the site of an astonishing discovery of over 1,500 uh, fossil elements of one of our human ancestors, a previously unknown relative, um, which has been named Homo naledi. And I'm gonna throw things over now to the expedi expedition leader, uh, Lee Berger, and he's gonna introduce who he has with him and then tell us a little bit about what they've been up to before we go down to one of the chambers and meet uh, the scientist in action. So Lee, it's great to see you this morning. Uh, it's great to see you too, Joe, and hello to Saudi Arabia. I can see the classroom there, and hello to everyone else joining us here on Explorer's Classroom. I'm here with Shaheed. Shaheed's a postcranial expert. He looks at the body of Homo naledi and other early hominids. And also, just next to me, I'm going to move the camera very carefully over here. You can see Mata, Bella, and Steve there, there in the background. Hey, hi, guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wavy to us. We're actually underground. Remarkably, this is coming to you from underground at the Rising Star Cave System. This, where I'm sitting now is the command center. And it's from here that we run all the operations underground in the excavation. And what's going on right now are live excavations about 130, 140 meters from us and about 40 meters underground. Uh, where Becca and Marina are busy excavating um, in one in the hill antechamber, which is actually one of the richest fossil hominid sites on the planet. It's really incredible. There we have fossils of uh, a species we call Homo naledi. Homo naledi is a species we know that existed in this area about 250,000 years ago, although it, the species itself appears to be very, very ancient. It must have come from millions of years ago in time and represents one of the more primitive members of our genus. It's within our lineage, but it sits uh, somewhere at the very root of our lineage. What's special about this cave is it's the only site in the world where this species has been found so far, but there are several chambers that have remains of these. And we believe that Homo naledi was using this cave in a very special way a quarter of a million years ago. They were probably living uh, in the uh, aspects of the cave, probably not too distant from where I'm sitting right now. And at times it appears that they were taking their dead back into these deep chambers. Now, I wanna give you a brief uh, description of, of what Homo naledi uh, looks like. Homo naledi has a brain about the size of an orange, about 450 to 550 cubic centimeters. Um, it has uh, teeth that are very small, almost the size of a human's, but primitive in their shape. Uh, it has ape-like shoulders, but the arms become more and more human-like until you reach its hands, which have uh, a very human-like proportion, but they're very long, uh, they're very curved. They're as curved as some of our most primitive ancestors. As you move down the body further, they have a very small spine, a wide flared hips that are similar to things like the Lucy uh, skeleton's hips. And then the legs become more and more human-like and are long and thin until you reach the feet, which are amongst the most human-like feet that uh, have ever been found in the fossil record. We didn't even know Homo naledi uh, existed until about three years ago when um, uh, Steve Tucker, who's with me here, you saw just a moment ago, and Rick Hunter explored deep within this rising star cave system and came across this chamber. Now the journey to that chamber is torturous at best. Today we have to slide and squeeze and crawl through that 140 meters distance. We climb a collapsed rock called Dragon's Back that goes up about 20 meters. And then you're looking down a narrow shaft that's 18 and a half centimeters wide, or about seven and a half inches. You slide down that shaft and eventually after about 12 meters, you enter the hill antechamber. And that's where I'm gonna send you right now. 
um, to the Hill antechamber. But first, I just want to show you the kind of images that we see here in the uh, in the uh, command center. Here you can see a monitor that we can control where we can bring up images of what's going on deep inside of the cave. And we can actually talk back and forth with the explorers as they excavate. That image you see in the middle is actually one of the newest partial skeletons of Homo naledi that we're excavating. Um, and you can see something large and white in the middle of it. And I'm gonna turn over to Marina, if you can bring her up, Joe, and she can explain exactly what the exciting thing it is that they're doing today. Hi, everybody. Can, can everyone hear us? Oh, yes, we can hear you, Marina. Go right on. All good. So I don't know how, how well you can see things uh, at the moment, but um, what Becca and I are doing today, actually, um, you can see there's kind of a large mound of, of dirt that we're working on, and there are some very bright white blobs as well to one side. And those white blobs actually are plaster bandages like you would have if you broke your arm or leg and you needed to have a cast on you. Um, so what we're actually doing is shrouding these, these fossils in this protective jacket because we're going to try and, and take these, this big mass out. It's actually too big to take out in one piece. The, the area that we have to go through, as Lee explained, is very, very tight and difficult to move through. And anything basically bigger than, you know, about 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters, we can't get through the, the cave system. So we actually have to break this mound down into several parts. But in order to do that, we want to protect the fossils as much as we can. So we're putting these jackets on, letting the, the plaster dry, and then we're going to try and, and take them out in, in single pieces so that then when we take them to the surface, we can start looking at them. Initially, we will probably CT scan them so that we can see inside and, and see what's intact and what's not. And then, you know, if, if we see something really interesting, then we can actually target our, our further explorations of these little lumps of, of sediment and dirt and actually get the material out. But it's uh, it's a pretty slow process at the moment, and uh, as you can probably see, pretty dirty. So um, I think one of the amazing things for all of you that are watching now is that these images are being streamed from one of the most remote locations that anyone has ever worked in looking for ancient human ancestors. And that's really a wonder of modern technology and, and our ability to interact with people around the world um, from these very, very remote uh, areas. It also, though, helps us do our science. Um, we actually are using Wi-Fi in the cave and the internet to talk back and forth between ourselves and to communicate with scientists around the world, getting advice about excavation methods or even discussing what findings are happening in real time. That has been one of the dramatic changes that has occurred uh, for our science over the last several years. Three years ago, when we ran the Rising Star Expedition, um, it took us kilometers and kilometers of cables, and we had to uh, often work with much more primitive uh, uh, equipment than we do now. Now the technology is reaching a stage where we can begin to communicate live via the internet now, but also part of what Becca and Marina are doing underground now is actually creating um, a virtual reality. They're actually filming for virtual reality, and it's not going to be very long before you, viewers around the world, and you in classrooms around the world, can actually enter this remote chamber that only a very few people have ever been into and actually visit it through virtual reality. And that's part of what we're doing now. We use that VR for both science and we're going to use it for uh, exploration, and we'll have a little bit of, uh, of fun with it. Joe, do you want to open it up maybe to some questions at this time? Absolutely. So thanks so much, Lee and team. I, it always amazes me when we do these, the pictures you're able to get from so deep underground. So um, I know it's a huge effort to wire the caves up like that. So uh, it's amazing. So thank you so much for the hard work you do to get um, what you're doing out to the public. It's pretty darn cool. 
So we're going to meet uh, our classroom joining us in Saudi Arabia. And I think some of these students would probably be the perfect size for underground astronauts. They might be a little young right now, but I think they'd be a pretty good size. Uh, so let me turn on their microphone. So we have, we're going to uh, Jubail in Saudi Arabia. We've got a great group of grade twos. Do you guys want to say hi to Lee and the team? Hi. And those hi, grade two. are enjoying their lunch right now. So that's pretty cool too. <laughs> so do you guys have some questions uh, for Lee and for uh, the group uh, working down in the Dinaletti chamber. Okay. Can you hear us? Yep. Do, uh -huh. Are there crystals in the cave? That, that's that's a great question. I'm going to uh, actually turn that question over to uh, well, it looks like the camera's moving uh, to Marina and Becca. If you would take that question, uh, they're probably going to show you some of the things that are in the cave. They're in the best position to do it. Is they're getting a light set up right now? I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Can you? See? I don't. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see above us here with the camera so there are actually quite beautiful crystals in here and the ones that are coming down uh from the ceiling to us here are stalactites and let's see if we can uh i don't know if you can see there's some flowstone here as well that's quite pretty and white um this material is just dolomite but you can maybe see let's see if i can uh, maybe you can see some of those. So yeah, there are some very pretty formations in here. Um, but yeah, so most of them are, are quite a bit higher than we are. So the what's amazing about that classroom is that you can you're actually uh, some of the first children ever to be able to actually look around in the cave like that and, and actually see those crystals. In fact, I'll tell you a little secret. It's the first time I've ever seen those uh, particular <laughs> crystals, which is pretty fun for me. Those are, are, all of the rocks here are based on limestones. Those gray rocks behind Marina and Becca are dolomites, and they're about 2.9 billion years old and they formed on the bottom of ancient seabeds prior to there being any complex life on the planet and they're full of lime and as water leaches down through that rock from the surface and it's actually raining here today in South Africa it leaches out the lime and then it redeposits it them in, in the crystal form that you saw so those are actually lime crystals that you see made of calcium carbonate all the different formations that you saw. Excellent. So I'll share as well that the grade twos, uh, they're studying landforms right now. So they're very excited today to learn a little bit more about the cave system. Great. All right. Well, if you guys have another question, go ahead. I see lots of hands. So there's definitely questions. Well, I just want to say something. That way, is it a question? No, is it a question? Well, yeah. No, okay, wait, we need questions. Questions, think of your questions. Me? Shyma, stand up. Me. Oh my goodness, they're shy. <laughs> the cows, you have a view? Uh, no, I'm just, oh. Hold on. Uh, I'm not shy. So that's, that's a question. Um, have you found fossils? Have we found fossils? Well, I'm going to send you back into the chamber with Becca and Marina because, believe it or not, those two scientists, and by the way, Becca and Marina, happy Women's Day. It's happy International Women's Day. These two scientists who just happen to be women are uh, have discovered probably more hum ancient 
human fossils than any other people alive today. So why don't you ask them if they're finding any fossils? Uh, can you see that I'm unwrapping something right here? Can you see, is it showing up? Yes, we can. This is a little piece of a fossil right here. <laughs> and that, that um, mound of dirt that Marina showed you a few minutes ago, this piece of fossil came from the edge of that mound of dirt. And this bone might be a little piece of a rib from Homo naledi. So this is a fossil that we just found an hour ago before we started putting those jackets, those white jackets on the mound so we could get it away. So this is a brand new fresh fossil. Well, it's a really old fossil, but we've just found it freshly. Fresh old fossil. So what's amazing about that kids is you're seeing a, a fossil of an ancient human relative for the first time, only two scientists have ever actually seen that, Becca and Marina. And those are some of the rarest sought after objects on, on Earth. And you've just practically seen one that was discovered just a little while ago. The newest fossil hominid probably found anywhere on the planet. Shahid here is sitting next to me. He's very excited about that rib, Becca, because Shahid <laughs> actually is a rib specialist. He actually works on the ribs of ancient humans. What did you think that was there, Shad? It's definitely part of the shaft of the rib, and it just so happened it's my first visit to the Rising Star site. So I brought the luck to find <laughs> to find the fossil. <laughs> you sure did. You sure did. Great question. All right. Well, boys and girls, you are in luck today because not only are you meeting famous fossil finders who found uh, more than probably anybody in the field, but we're also getting to see fossils coming right out of the ground, which is pretty darn amazing. So let's see if we can get another question from our class. Um, what, what kind of fossils do you think you, like what kind of parts of the body did they find? So, so the uh, the fossils we find here at Rising Star, particularly in the chambers that Becca and Marina are working in, um, almost exclusively belong to one species. And this is a species of ancient human relative that we have named Homo naledi. In fact, it's this cave system is the only cave system in the world that we found them so far, this particular species. These are ancient human relatives. They're related to us and part of what uh, people like Shahid and me and Becca and Marina and the more than 150 scientists that work on this project are doing is we're trying to understand how Homo naledi is related to living humans. We do find in other parts of this system, other animals. Uh, just about 60 meters away from me is a fossil saber-toothed cat that's stuck up onto the top of a, a roof and they're actually thousands of other fossils in the cave around me. If you can imagine where Shahid and I are sitting right now, um, in front of us and to the left of us are probably almost three kilometers of underground cave system, um, all of which we're constantly exploring and we're constantly finding new areas with new and exciting fossils. All right. And so uh, Becca and Marina, I can see um, when we visit you down in the chamber that it looks very tight and I can see Marina that you're barefoot. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like, maybe the atmosphere or the, um, the conditions so deep in the cave system? Sure. Um, that's actually a good question. Yeah. As you can see, Becca and I are both barefoot, um, quite, quite dirty barefoot. Um, but the reason that we, we don't wear shoes inside this part of the, the cave system is that because where we're working, um, there are so many fossils, we want to be very careful that we don't step on anything or break anything. And so we actually take our, our shoes off so that we don't inadvertently step on something with boots on and you really can't feel what you're doing when you have boots on. So if we have bare feet, you're, you're a little bit more sensitive to what's underneath you. Also, you can maybe see, I'll just see if I can get up here, um, the ladder behind me here. So that, that's actually a piece of a, a normal uh, ladder that, that folds up, but we've actually spread it across the floor and it's actually spread across a gap in the floor. So um, 
we're trying to raise ourselves up off, off the sediments and away from the fossils, but give ourselves a platform to work on. So um, unfortunately, because the spaces are quite small and, and we're working very close to the fossils, um, Becca and I usually have to lie either on our chest or, or um, kind of hunched over on our hands and knees to do the actual excavation. And we've, we've brought down a few, a few pillows and some pads to try and make that slightly more comfortable. But it's, uh, it's still pretty, uh, pretty sore on your back every now and then. Um, but the rest of the space is actually reasonably comfortable. We, as you saw, there's a bit of a ceiling here, so we're not hunched down. But the cave stays at a, at a constant 18 degrees Celsius, but it's usually at around 99% humidity. So it's a little bit sticky in here. We do wear overalls, but as you can see, we've, we've taken them down around our waists because it is quite warm in here. Um, and it, it can be a little bit stuffy with the humidity, but generally speaking, it's, it's nice and quiet and it's, um, it's a very peaceful place to work. All right, well, let's jump back to our classroom and see if they have another question for us. Can you be a little louder? I heard a question, but I didn't quite hear it. What kind of diamonds did you find in the cave? <laughs> was the question, uh, what kind of diamonds did we find in the cave? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> we haven't found any diamonds uh, in this particular cave. The diamonds that, and there are many, many of them, and I see Marina shaking her hand. She wishes she had found some diamonds in the cave. Uh, we don't find diamonds in this kind of rock, but there are diamonds that come from very nearby here. Of course, South Africa is famous for its, its uh, diamonds, but there are diamonds in kimberlite rocks, and they come from as close as maybe 50 or 60 kilometers from us in a place called Cullinan. They find uh, actually many diamonds, and they even find diamonds to the south of us along the Vol River um, coming out of ancient volcanoes. These rocks are sedimentary rocks, and that means that they form very slowly on the bottom of oceans, and thus they don't contain diamonds. But I have a question for the class, if we can. Okay. Yes, Nate. Anyone else? Sure. She has a question to ask. Okay. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, how how many of you know that there are maybe caves in in Saudi Arabia too? Do you think there might be caves that are like this in Saudi Arabia? Maybe, maybe, maybe. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So how, how many can, of you think we I might answer that, Marina? Want to explore them? <laughs> So I, I'm going to try and answer that, Marina, because Marina is actually leading the question on. I was just in Saudi Arabia a few months ago uh, at the invitation of Prince Sultan, and I actually looked around, and I can tell you there are very exciting caves in Saudi Arabia, and we're actually thinking at some stage of bringing an exploration team to Saudi Arabia to actually look for fossils like these in those exciting caves. All right. So maybe well, so maybe I lost when those guys. guys get older, they can come. Yeah, I lost you guys for a moment. So just just goes to show things froze on my end, and I'm here in Austin, Texas, and you guys are getting a better connection <laughs> in a cave in South Africa. So that's pretty darn impressive. <laughs> and I just want to follow up on the question about the diamonds, because um, you, you definitely hear about diamonds being found in South Africa. But... I would say that what you're finding in many cases for a lot of people could be even more precious than diamonds, the fossils. Oh, that's absolutely true, Joe. That's absolutely true. The fossils that we're finding are really considered the rarest objects on planet Earth uh, that people uh, search for. We're trying to make them not so rare anymore in places like the Dinaletti Chamber where we're finding lots of them, but uh, they are certainly more precious than diamonds and rarer than diamonds. So how much longer is this little uh, stint in the field going to be for the team? Right. So so this expedition will run for a couple more weeks. Um, we'll decide uh, based on how we're going and 
what we want to accomplish, uh, how long we'll, we'll take it, but certainly it's going to end before uh, the end of March. Our goal here is to really do a couple of things. One is to extract that uh, mash skeleton uh, and we're in the process of taking it out now, and that's been going very, very successfully. Becca and Marina have, have worked at pillaring it out and now are actually covering it with plaster. And, and the first process of, of bringing that up might happen either later today or early tomorrow. And then uh, once that's out, we're going to continue doing some of the virtual reality work. So we've been filming with special cameras in the cave to do virtual reality to bring that to people and scientists. Outside of that, we're going to continue that kinds of cameras. And then depending on the time, we might go exploring uh, taking out uh, some uh, uh, tests in areas where we found some other pretty cool fossils on our last expedition that you joined us on, Joe. So this is going, it's an exciting time. We're going to start being underground a lot more frequently. And uh, and th this expedition, though, probably two more weeks. All right. And so, Saeed, I know it's your first uh, trip to the cave system. Are you going to try your hand at being an underground astronaut and squeeze down into the chambers? I think my body proportions won't allow me to go through that chute. <laughs> so I'm comfortable in the large space that I am in at the moment. <laughs> it's a happy space. <laughs> Perfect. And so have you been able to look at a few of the the fossils that have, that have been uh, brought out so far during this expedition? Not during this one, but from the previous one, we, we have looked at the ribs. And in fact, we published a paper on the ribs, which the, the young kids can also go and access it and see what pictures and see what the actual ribs look like in the more complete state, where we, we actually did, did put, put pieces together to get a more complete picture of what a rib looks like, and then we took those elements of the ribs to get a bit better picture of what the actual thorax looks like. So it's small little pieces that fit like pieces of a jigsaw to give a more complete picture of what the individual homo, homo naledi structure, body structure would look like. Okay. And so Lee, I was, as Saeed was talking, I saw something flying behind him. Are there bats in the cave? Or is that maybe a bird? Uh, that, that wasn't a bat. That's a little martin that's got a nest just above uh, Shahid's head there in the back. And uh, it's flying in and out to its nest. But there are lots of bats in this cave uh, and lots of martins and swallows that uh, that fly around here uh, all the time and join us. There, there are even uh, animals in this cave that are porcupines. And there are hyraxes or dossies, as we call them, uh, down in South Africa that crawl around us periodically. All right, so it's a, a whole ecosystem. That's pretty cool. Let's see if the grade twos have another question for us. Oh, yep, lots of hands. Do we find any dinosaur bones? Um, the answer is no, we don't find dinosaur bones in here. These fossils uh, and the, these cave systems are actually way too young for dinosaurs. These caves only formed probably about two to three million years ago, and dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. However, I trained first as a dinosaur paleontologist, and there are wonderful dinosaurs uh, across South Africa that are found mostly in areas like the Karoo, where we actually have lots of sediments that are dinosaur aged. All right. And Lee, since the, the class that we have are studying uh, landforms, um, I think you mentioned the caves, uh, a lot of limestone. So were these caves formed over time by running water penetrating through the limestone? Right, so as I said, the bedrock is what we call a dolomitic limestone, and it formed on the bed of ancient seas almost three billion years ago. It's a very old, very hard, very dense rock. What happens is um, earthquakes and maybe even meteor strikes, a very big one occurred just to the south of here at a place called Friedefort, have shattered these rocks in places over time. And there are big faults that run through them. Those faults are just big cracks in the rock. 
And along those cracks, water percolates down from the top and seeps through and does erode the cave. And also tree roots can come down uh, through and erode these caves uh, uh, open as well. And termites can come down and erode the rock away, as well as underground water in rivers and aquifers flowing through it. Uh, along those faults and cracks can actually form uh, these these large chambers that we're in now. All right. All right. And back to and the, let's jump back to the chamber just for a moment with Marina and Becca. And where you are right now, um, are there multiple ways to get into that chamber or is there just one way to get in? Uh, um, as far as we've been able to figure out, there's really only one way, and that way is just behind Marina. Um, you can see there's a rope and a ladder there coming down our chute, but that's a, that's maybe you can see it, the lights are a little dim, uh, but that's the only way we've found to, to come into this chamber so far. And we've looked, the cave exploration team has looked all around, and the geologists have come and studied the cave from the surface and from underground and, and it's really the only way we figured out that you can get into this into this cave chamber yeah and when you're making your way into the chamber at the start of the day uh how long of a process is that it takes us about 20 minutes 25 minutes now when we first got started it was taking us you know the back in 2013 when we first came in here it could take us up to like 45 minutes but We've all gotten a little bit better at it and maybe a little more fit and we learned where to put our hands and feet as we're doing the climbing. So we can go pretty quickly now, but we don't want to go too quickly because we have to be really careful. We don't want anything. We don't want to have any accidents or trips or falls or slips while we're coming in. So we do try to move very carefully and, um, as we're climbing and, and even when we're crawling on our bellies, we go pretty carefully. So you're becoming more of an expert at, at navigating the space. Is it still, I remember seeing early pictures, all the bumps and bruises and scrapes. Is it still pretty tough? Oh yeah, we still have lots of bumps and bruises and scrapes on us. That's, that's a little bit unavoidable. Even if you're super, super careful, you're always bumping into something or you're pressing your body against one part of, like your arm against one part of a wall so you can get leverage to make, bring your leg up to another part and you end up with bumps and bruises and scrapes. It's just part of the job. Yeah. It, it's fun. All right. Well, great twos. Maybe we'll take one more question and then we'll let the team get back uh, to business for today. So let's switch it over. Your microphone is ready. Okay. Uh, I'm not. No, he got shy. He got shy. Okay. Um, no, I saw it. Are the fossils? Are the fossils? <laughs> are the fossils okay, okay. are the f um fossils rarer than any kind of um diamond and crystal? That's right. Yes, the fossils are rare. Actually, uh, I'll tell you a terrible secret: diamonds aren't that rare. Diamonds are really actually very common on Earth. It's the way in which we distribute diamonds and gem quality diamonds that uh, make them. Uh, very, very expensive. So, in fact, these fossils, um, up until recently, there were actual, actually more people who studied these fossils than there were fossils to study. But actually, this place, the Rising Star Cave, has changed that. Um, we found in this cave system alone more fossils than had been found in all the previous excavations uh, prior to this in Africa. So it's really a very special place, but they are still incredibly rare. There's still just a few thousand of these from the whole continent of Africa, and that makes them much, much, much rarer than all kinds of diamonds. In fact, all kinds of precious stones. All right. Well, great twos. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for being underground astronauts and joining us on a trip to the cave system. I hope you guys learned a lot about the cave and what Lee and his team are up to. What'd you think? Did you guys have fun? Was it fun? Yes! yes. All right. <laughs> Let's see a, a show of hands. How many think that they want to be fossil hunters when they grow up? <laughs> All right. There you well, go. Come Lee and Boston. join us. <laughs> and future recruits. <laughs> so come and join us anytime. Come visit us in South Africa. It's been great talking to you, Saudi Arabia. Bye-bye.
All right. And boys and girls, uh, I'll send your teacher the link, but next week we're going to take another trip down uh, into the cave system a little bit uh, later in the day for North American classrooms, but you guys will be able to watch it the next day so you can see what uh, Lee and Marina and Becca and Shahid have been up to and see if there's any new updates. So thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Lee, Becca, uh, Shahid, and Marina, thank you so much for taking us into your world. Uh, absolutely incredible, especially to be able to see that little piece of fossil and uh, the amazing finds that you're making. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Join us again. All right. Yeah. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>